Let me bang you. I do let you bang. Let me bang you, Jamie. Let me bang you. Let me you. Let me bang 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 you. It is time once again for your favorite mixed martial arts podcast. Recording out of Los Angeles, California, it's MMA Roasted with Adam Hunter. Who the fuck is that guy? Actually, I'm actually in the guest bedroom we have at the house. Uh, which has been crazy. I got uh, Bill Dawes here. I got John Dodson. I'm exhausted. I drove five hours to a gig last night in Sacramento uh, from LA thinking that like, oh, cause it was, a, it was like the punchline. I'd never played there. I'm like, oh, the booker will be there. And then I get there. Of course the booker's not there. Uh, and, but I ended up headlining it and like killing it, which was great. But then the promoter, I'm like, he's like, Hey man, here's, a hundred dollars now and i'll venmo you the rest which was like a lot more than that like let's say like whatever 10 times the amount of that and then of course he's like i'll venmo you the rest at midnight and i got a five-hour ride it's just it's like not there i'm like yo where's the dude where where's the money you know and then he and then this, he's like i'll have it in the morning and this morning i hit him up I'm like hey where's the and then he's like i'm like bro listen you know this is my daughter now missed summer camp because i couldn't get up because i had like an hour to take her wife had to go to work early so now i got her all day which is great but it's like she's yelling at me to get her biscuits and daddy i, I have a booger you want it you know and i'm like hey man where's this i'm like bro i'm gonna put you on blast on social media which i don't want to do i don't want to do that but i'm gonna say listen attention comedians do not work with this guy he owes me x amount of money and it's like and then now he's writing me this long ass apology saying i gotta wait for the money to get to the bank i'm like well don't, don't have me fucking drive 10 hours 11 hours to do a gig if the money's not going to be there and, and number one and number two who I is this guy i don't even want to give him because uh, i'm like you know it's one of those things like bro don't i you know i go next time a comic gets off stage give him the money or say hey man you'll have the money in two days or you'll have the money in three days don't say in three hours and make me check my Venmo like an asshole. And now I'm mad the whole ride home, you know? And now I'm like, yeah. anyway, John Dotson, how are you, man? I'm doing good, boss. How you been? Long time no see. Seems like you got your old, well, pretty much some troubles going on, brother. No, nah, I'm all right, man. It's just, it's not, I mean, like this is all be settled in. I, I, I don't like to make threats. I don't, I don't, and I'm not going to blast this guy on social media because I don't want anyone knowing how much I'm making, you know, anyway, yeah. even, even though it's a good number. But at the same time, it's like, bro, I'm sure you dealt with promoters in your life where they're like, oh, you know, we'll get you the money next week or, or whatever. And it's just not there. And then you got to chase it. And like, like you, did you ever have that problem or no? So they flew me out to fight in the Dominican Republic, sat there, did a whole show. We sat there, get, banged it out against John Moraga the very first time he had fought, you know. And then uh, we get back to the States. Or right, actually, so we were trying to get them as soon as the fight was over. The next morning, they said they'll pay us. We went to their hotel room. And everybody had left except for one guy. And then all the fighters were trying to go ahead. And I, uh, I don't know how to say it very nicely, but uh, put this man in his place so that <laughs> he wasn't going to be swimming with the sharks for the rest of his life. Yeah, the last thing you want is to <laughs> have fighters. I, I felt bad for Caraway. Brian Caraway went to Russia, won his last fight, and didn't get paid. To this day, three really? years later, yeah, none of the fighters on that whole car got paid in Russia. Yeah, it's like yeah, that same thing happened with us on the Dominican Republic. None of that whole show was like pretty much everybody fought for free and got a free vacation type of thing. <sighs> I mean, I've been doing this twenty something years, and like I know this guy. I, I like I know this guy. He's he's not a bad guy. He's just like bro, like it's not even the money. It's not the money. It's it's the time it takes in my head. Cause I'm not the kind of guy that yeah. can just let stuff go. And then it's also like not getting my kid to school. Cause I don't want to drive on an hour. So now it's yeah. like, now I got to do a podcast with her watching Peppa Pig all day. And I'm like, you know what? It, like, am I being a bad parent now? Cause I'm not with, you know, it's just, and then, and then I'm in therapy. I'm talking about, and like literally someone drove into my house. So now I got a gate in front of my house. I don't know if you see my house on 4th of July, uh -huh. a drunk driver made a U-turn crash right into my gate, into my car, 
destroyed my car, like total loss. Like I, I went outside and I'm like, I heard like a bang. I'm like, we've been hit. I go outside. The guy gets out of the car. It's a black guy. I'm like, are you okay? He's like, I'm okay. He takes off running, leaves his car in my, oh my, in my van. his car is a total loss in his car had fireworks. He had fireworks and a, and a tank of gas in his car. I mean, it could have been the best 4th of July thing of all time. And then like, now I have no gate. I have, I got, we got to lay out money for a temporary gate. I have no car. I got to like, look for a new car. My wife's like, let's get another SUV. I mean, dude, we don't need an S. Now I got to fight with my mom, my, 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 my mom, my, my wife over like, over like me. I'm, I'm going on like repo.com. And you know, so it's just one of those things where it's like, it's a, it's a mess. But uh, anyway, yeah. so, uh, but uh, you, let's talk about you. Cause you have a beautiful kid in your car and you're doing bare knuckle boxing. You, so you have the best. Very good. Very oh, very hey, how's it going kids? You had the, the, those kids look thrilled. Uh, now you had the best fight you've had in a while. Your last fight, you look like yeah. the John Dotson of old. Like you, that's what everyone keeps on saying. I was like, man, that John Dotson never left. He's always been here. Just yes. a performance wise, didn't come back. But there are sometimes that you were like relied a little bit too much on your power, or you got I wouldn't say lazy, but you were like you were just like yeah, a little. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe you got up to one ninety. 200 to 10, uh, the, maybe the weight. I, I got so what it was is I fell in love with the power, and I kept, kept on telling myself, Hey, you can go ahead and knock anybody out with one shot. I was like, That one shot kept on waiting and waiting and waiting, and I was continuously waiting for that one shot. And that last one, I was like, Man, this is stupid. I just need to go ahead and be myself, create the opportunities, make a miss, and just keep on hitting them every single time. And you that's what great. I did. And what was the guy's name before again? Uh, Francisco Rivera. Yeah, who's a good fighter, ex-UFC guy, and you looked awesome. So instead of going, all right, I'm going to, you know, either make it back to the UFC or win a Bellator belt or, or PFL, you now go into bare knuckle boxing, yeah. uh, which makes no sense, but okay, fine. Is uh, it a better fit for you, John? Do you think it's a better fit at some level? Well, so I didn't abandon mixed martial arts all in general. I went, I'm going to go do both of them. So in my contract, I can go do a bare knuckle fight and also do uh, an MMA bout. This is just a, net, a cheaper way, or not a cheaper way, a uh, more time-consuming way that I can go ahead and make 125 because I'm going to go back down to flyweight and then continuously try to do that for MMA. I just want to show the world that I can make flyweight and crushing this dude here at Albuquerque and then go on to whatever venture as I can, either if, whether it be in the bare knuckle or whatever mixed martial arts or organization I can get into. Now, how do you train for bare knuckle boxing? Well, I've been punching myself a lot in the face because I know I'm going to hit the hardest in the division. So I've been just throwing hands with myself all day, every day. I, I'm serious. I mean, are you boxing without gloves in practice? No, I actually, I'm, I'm actually boxing with regular boxing gloves. And then on some days, I'm, I'm making sure that I'm mixing it up with MMA gloves because me and my brother are both fighting on the same card together. Who's your and brother? And that's the reason why. Yeah, I have a younger brother. Has my younger gone? bigger brother is fighting on the card and i that's the reason why like i wanted to do something with my brother and he wanted to do bare knuckle and he's been signed up with them for the last two years he has a, a contract with them and he's like hey they're coming out here would you want to really fight a bare knuckle fight and i was like i'll do it if you really want me to and he goes absolutely i want to share the night with you not being your corner man but being that brother's in arm with you so i was like you are my brother he goes you know what i mean and i was like all right Let's go do it. Does so we're going to go to war. Does he do MMA, uh, your brother? Does he do MMA, your brother? Or? He does do MMA, but he doesn't like MMA. He doesn't like, like, my brother has got me ready for all my fights. So if it came to a wrestling bout, he How said, your to all the and stuff. He, huh? Your biological brother, right? Yeah, my biological brother. Like, he's my actual younger brother. He's eight, uh, he's 16 months younger than me. Oh, wow. So, so did he How wrestle too? Him, though. Huh? How much better are you than him? Well, I'm way faster than he is, but he hits harder than I do. Now, okay, so what's his record in what's his record in MMA? Uh, my brother's record in MMA, he is seven and two. Seven and two. He's a pro. Um, uh, he's an amateur. He never wanted to go pro. Okay, like so he, he was an amateur. He had that thing that called uh, uh, what's that? What's that sickness? Job. 
<laughs> yeah, the job, work, life kind of like ruined it. So it ruined his MMA career that continued to like plague him and fatigue his whole lifestyle of fighting. <laughs> now, now, I heard Bare Knuckle pays better than almost everything but the UFC, even more than the UFC, according to Paige Van Zandt, according to some of these people that went over there. Is that your experience? For right now, uh, they're not paying better than the UFC. Right. But they are paying better than what I was getting my last fight, and I'd rather go ahead and do that. I'm like, you saw the beautiful kids in the back. I got to go make sure I make a paycheck for them, and it's not longer just for me. I have to do it for them. And I would love to go ahead and do as many mixed martial arts battles, battles as I can, but I don't want to put those damage and wears and tears on my life just for nickels and dimes because I have my kids more important to me than anything else. Have you ever had a boxing match? Yes, I have. What's, what's your record in boxing? 2-0. Two 2-0, and oh. Two and oh. okay. Now, yeah, bare knuckle, one, one, one knockout. Now, bare knuckle seems a lot like, almost like a hockey fight where you could grab the back of the head. Uh, you could sort of just like do all kinds of weird stuff. A lot of boxers have trouble because they're just traditional boxers at the distance and bare knuckle is almost like a... It's almost like a brawl in some ways. Are you well, able to so transition? I really tell everybody, because they, they keep on telling me that I need to go ahead and prepare myself for a boxing match. And I was like, no, not at all. They're like, yes, you do. I was like, no, not at all. Like, this is bare knuckle. They're like, yeah, in boxing, I can't tie clinch you and pound your face in and then move you and then be able to still hit you every step of the way. In boxing, they'll stop me. And they're like, well, have you ever done boxing? I was like, yes, I've boxed and trained with boxers for years. Like, for the majority of my whole mixed martial arts career, I train with professional boxers, getting them ready for their own boxing fights. Right, right, right. So I'm like, mm. Yeah. Now, so, like, so, I, have a no, so I have a question. Yes. When yes. you're ever fighting, if you're ever losing, do you ever like, is it like a movie where you think about your daughters and then you like well up with anger and like you can beat them, but you have to think of your daughters to get there? Is that a thing or is that only in the movies? I think that's only in movies because the thing that only pops in my head is how my face hurts a lot. Why am I getting hit? Uh, do I still have a, enough in the gas tank to do something? Because if I don't, this dude better hit harder than I do because I need to go to sleep really quick because my head hurts, my body hurts. I think I might be peeing blood soon. Now, also <laughs> punching, right? A lot of times, bare knuckle boxers, they, they break their hands because they go yep. out there, they swing for the fences, hands yeah. broken. Uh, how are we preparing for this? Uh, I'm preparing to break my hands. <laughs> <laughs> we already established I hit hard. I know, but like, are you gonna hit seventy percent or eighty no. percent? No, absolutely not. I'm trying to go in there and hit them as many times as I can, and if I break my hands in the process, that means I did the job right. But what if you break if you your hand and the guy's still there? That's not gonna be a, that's not gonna be an issue. If I broke my hand on his face, I know I broke several bones in his eye or in his jaw, so he's not standing back up. Are you training with Greg Jackson for this and Winkle John? I am not training with them right now because of the fact that I need to go ahead and go back to my roots. I want training with Max Heyman, the guy that I actually started boxing with years. I mean, like when I first started boxing, he was my boxing coach. So I, I went mean, back to my original boxing coach to make sure I can go ahead and develop some new skills, new footwork, and be able to be a little bit more sneaky. Have you talked to John Jones about about this? Have you have you huh? did you tell John Jones about this or no? No, I didn't know John Jones would actually want to come see me. He's just like, he's so tall, he walks over me. Like, have you ever had a full grown man step over your head and forget that you were there? No. That sucks. <laughs> but, all right, well, what about your boys? What about your boys in Albuquerque? Who are you told about this? I've um, been training with everybody, and they all know that's going on, and I'm making sure that we can go ahead and do the thing. Like, I'm, they're going to support me throughout this whole fight, and we're going to go through the fight camp. Like, everybody. Like Donald and everybody, they were excited to see me go out there and bust some heads. So now Isaac Valley Flag, right? Now he's a guy yes. you train with him. He went crazy. He got hooked on meth. He robbed the bank almost, uh, but now he's doing much better. He's sober oh. and he's and he's doing bare knuckle boxing. Uh, has he trained with you for this? Yeah, he's been helping me out. Try to get ready for some boxing bouts. We've been moving around here and there, and he's like, I don't understand how you're still so fast. I was like, it's just because. I'm sexy. You just fall in love with the look <laughs> of my face, and it just keeps you mesmerized every time I'm touching you. <laughs> you have a very hot wife. Down. So your wife is very attractive. Sorry, kids, uh, but you have a very attractive <laughs> wife. Um, has she, or does she support this? Uh, she said, "Yeah, you better not get hit." <laughs> <laughs> but you do. 
No, her exact words was, do what you need to do to make sure you win this fight. Because if you lose, I don't want you to have to tell me that you didn't give it your all. So I need you to go out there and give it your all and make sure you can go ahead and do this. Nice. Okay. Now, what, what weight is this fight? At this way, this fight's at flyweight. So I'm going to go back down to flyweight. So 125, we're going to go and do the thing. And how much do you right now? Right now, 138. All right. Bill? John, are there any tricks tricks to not break your knuckles? Are there any ways that they treat the, the hands or do anything, tape them in a special way, differently with uh, bare knuckle? I'm going to be honest with you. I have no idea. <laughs> like, I've been trying to, I've been trying to do that myself, try to study on it. And like, everyone tells you to do like, use Maku out of boards, hit the bags with like, uh, hit, smash your hand on a sandbag, smack um, iron bricks and stuff like that. But, in all honesty, I don't think I can develop that kind of like hand dexterity, hand strength within like six weeks. So yeah. I'm just gonna go out there and hit this man as hard as I can and just punish him. Who are you fighting? I'm fighting Ryan Benoit. Oh, next UFC wait. fighter, and he's yeah, wait, he's just a big, one the of those big brawlers. Want to go in the front? The, the baby yeah. face assassin. Yeah, not the baby assassin, but I'm talking about the baby face assassin. Yes. Yeah, yes. Oh wait, he's a good fighter too. Like, I mean, so you got two MMA guys making their bare knuckle bare knuckle boxing debut. Yeah. Wow. All right. Now he he's good. He's actually he's a tough guy. Now he's oh, Mexican. Absolutely. He's he's yeah. gonna throw a lot of a lot of punches at you. Well, he has to land though. That's the thing. <laughs> like I watched a lot of his fights, and I know him. How, like I watched his career. He's throwing a lot of punches that miss, and I'm going to be those dude who's going to capitalize on every single one of those that he swings and for the fences, and I'm going to hit him with 17 shots as an answer. Just now, to remind him, hey, I'm a monster. Now, last time when you got hit, you start laughing. Yes. Uh, are you going to start laughing again when you get hit in bare knuckle boxing? Yeah, because it's <laughs> going to be even funnier because of the fact that somebody like knuckled me in my forehead. It's not even like an actual fist. It'd be just like, mm -hmm. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, Bill, you, you, you think John doesn't want to get a job? Is this one of those things where he's like, I don't want to get a job yet? I'm going to do every, is it like, I mean, is this, where, where are we going to stop with this? Is it going to be ex bare knuckle MMA, extreme pillow fighting? Like, uh, what, what's going on? <laughs> if, I, if they sign me up for extreme pillow fighting, I would be down. Because of the fact that I think it's hilarious. <laughs> it's not even like a real fight. You're just swinging a pillow. It's in an octagon. It's actually in, they have it in, in a ring. What's the name? Did I, Marcus Brummage came to my, yeah. my show and they, they were giving $3,000 a fight for the pillow fights. And, uh, and, and I, somebody got knocked out in the pillow fight. Hello. Like, <laughs> Are they that hard? Yeah, I guess people were doing like spin moves. They were winding up. Put coke cans in them. That's crazy. Yeah, oh. but they have their own like brand of pillow that has like a handle on it. So I didn't think that it actually was going to be hard enough to knock anyone out. I got knocked out. All right. So who wins this week? Brian Ortega, Yair Rodriguez. So it's going to be an interesting fight because of the fact that Brian Ortega is so quick to take the back. But since he's so been like working on his hands, him and Yair is probably going to be throwing hands for a, a quick minute. I think Yair is going to have fancier feet for like footwork and kicks coming in and out. Or Ortega might just take him down and just submit him. So yeah. it's going to be that how – Pretty so much who wins? Striker. What kind of answer is that? Who wins the fight? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. Like, you, you said Ortega. Ortega for you. What, Bill, what do you think? Ortega? I mean, I like Ortega just because he's so hot. He's almost as hot as John. Dude, yeah. he's, not, dude he's with Tracy Cortez. It's not fair. Before that, he had like Halle <laughs> Berry. Uh, I mean, it's like, come on. My well, brother, I just have to say that he will fight Brian Ortega just for, just for Tracy's hand. <laughs> I was like, what what, what do you what did that even come about? He goes, Yo, I'm in love with her. I was like, you know what? Win this fight first and then challenge him next. So so Brian, so Dodson, your your dad was black, right? Your mom Filipino? Yes. And your wife is Filipino. No, she is Hispanic. Oh, like if Hispanic. I call her Mexican, she stabs me. Oh so, <laughs> <laughs> so your kids are what so your kids are what? Like half your they're half Mexican or half Hispanic, Hispanic, a quarter black, quarter Filipino. Well, I don't know why you say a quarter Filipino. Uh, <clears throat> we're just going to go ahead and say that they're half black and all Filipino because, you know, the Philippines was overrun by Span, by Spain. So whole Spanish people, that culture is already integrated into the Philippines. So our blood is all the same. 
<laughs> got it. Got it. Now, does your mom speak Tagala? Yeah, she speaks Tagala. So and I speak very a little bit. And all I tell people is, like, I know enough to cuss you out, but I understand everything you say. They're like, what? I was like, yeah, I, uh, like, I know what's going on. Like, I know Spanish. Yeah. Like, yeah. I can't I can have a conversation with you in English or you're talking to me, but I can't talk to you back in it. Now, my ex was half Filipino and uh, half insane. And uh, she gets super jealous. Like, she would get, like, I mean, she was the most normal person. And then she became psycho. Was your mom the same way? No, my mom was always cool. She was like, mm, she was like, ah, I'm fine. With if girls were like, I talked to her, like my mom's like girlfriend, she'd be like, all right, well then go ahead, be with her. I'm gonna go find somebody else. Like, oh, okay, that's how you wow. do things. She's like, yeah, like if they don't want to be with me, they don't have to be with me. She just oh, starts good. off. Good. And your parents are still together? No. Oh no. My dad is in uh, Florida. They got divorced a long time ago. Like I was like five when they got divorced. Was your dad in your life at all? Uh. <clears throat> he did like every other black man. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. I mean, he didn't, on. I mean, I'm saying he, he he wasn't around. He was nowhere to be found. I mean, he wasn't like Kobe. You know how Kobe took, took his daughter. But what about uh what about after what about after you were in the UFC? What about after you became one of the ultimate fighter? Go up suddenly? No. No, the funny thing is like my uncle started talking to me and then that was about it. My my dad was like still just like mm, nah. Now, now my, mom, my, my mother left, went to a mental hospital, had schizophrenia, haven't seen her since I was three. And I think that part of that, like, that, like wanting that, like drove me that like, yeah. you know, do you think, do you think not having a father helped drive you to become like the, the stud, the champion you are? Mm. No, like what drove me to be like as successful as I am is my mom. My mom sat there, made sure I can go ahead and just focus in on what I need to do. She told me if I wanted to play any games or anything, I have to go ahead and do all my homework, finish up with the schoolwork, and then go ahead and do it. Like, I'll, even if I was, like, have football practice, like, nope, you got to do this workout, this one, and this one, and then you can go ahead and play some games. I was like, all right, so I have to do these things to do those. So I was like, okay, cool. So now even in like, my everyday life, it's like I have to do these things before I get to go ahead and play or do anything that I want to do. Is that why you're so chubby, though, that Filipino food? No, the Filipino food is what keeps me like slim. <laughs> oh, really? I mean, one Filipino that you know that's that's super big. We're not Yokozunas. We are not Japanese. <laughs> okay, got it, got it. So Filipino household. So you 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 uh you did karaoke when you were a kid and you danced. You had talent shows. Absolutely. Did you not look at my last my last little Instagram reel? I was dancing, vibing, like yeah, fight move. What's up? Mm. John, John, you are my you might be one of my favorite people in the history of fighting. Like, I, I just I, I I know it's weird because you're three foot two, but I look up to you so much, man. Uh, like you're always you're such a champion, man. I, I mean, at life. I mean, and uh, it's I'm it's, glad that you're looking out at me. It must be a tall ladder. No, I'm serious, man. I mean, you were what two time state champion in high school, right? Yeah. Two time state champion, ultimate fighter. You won. I mean, you knocked out Dillashaw. I thought you won the first. Uh, I, I thought you won the first fight against Demetrius Johnson. I I, I think it was at least at least a draw. So I, the second one, I did not have what it take. I thought I was. I thought he was coming in trying to like explode a lot more, and then he was being more patient. So I thought he yeah, since he was being more patient. Wasn't movement. your mom in the hospital or something like three days before or something happened to you? Like no. So my mom. It was my mom's birthday, but uh, she was born. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Your baby was born like a week before because you were you were going oh, wow. back and forth. And it like, you know, no, we were, she was born the week of. The I, week flew of. Into, yeah. I flew to Vegas and then had to fly back to the deliver. She and then, was born and then, on the first and the fight was on the fourth. And then fly <laughs> back to fight the greatest fighter of all time. Uh -huh. I mean, that's just like. I, is, was it because you were scared of your Mexican wife that if you weren't there, she would have killed you? No, I was, I wanted to do something that I didn't think my dad did. So I wanted to be there for my kids from start to finish. Wow. wow. So I'm going to be in every part of their life every, since, every step of the way. That's why I got them with me right now. They go with me to training. They yeah. go with me everywhere. What, yeah. uh, what, 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 See, Adam, not everyone is motivated by fear of death from their spouse, okay? <laughs> was your daddy I mean, military? Was your daddy I that you're saying it and not me because if I say mm, and oh, she no. watches this? Oh. <laughs> Was your dad in the uh, military? 
I don't know. My dad wasn't in the military, but my uh, grandparents were. So, where, so where my mom, yeah, like my mom, grandma, and grandma, and dad, my grandma and grandpa, they were in the military. Then my mom was a base brat. Wow. So your parents were Filipinos in the U.S. military. Were they nurses? No, uh, my 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 <laughs> grandma was, but my uncle, my dad, <laughs> my grandfather was a, a flyboy. He was a pilot. Wow. A Are you guys going to see Easter Sunday with Joe Coy in August? Is that like every Filipino goes to that? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. You know? You're telling me I get to kick you with Joe Coy? Joe Coy! What's up? What's your boy? <laughs> a Filipino pilot. Was he a kamikaze pilot? I, I, no, I don't no, even no. know. <laughs> so, uh, I, don't know. I don't know if I tell people this. I'm, I'm like more, um, I am more black than anything because my my mom's dad, my grandfather, is black. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's also just cooler to be black. You might as well be black. You yeah. So, uh, uh, my mom is actually half black and half Filipino. Wow. So, the, the, got it. So, the, so the, your, your mom's side loved the black dudes. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> like, got it. Got that's, it. Got it. That's how the trend's going. Yeah, that's cool, man. I mean, look, man, you, you, you like who you like. Um, all right, so we got now um, uh, your girl, Michelle Watterson. Are you still training yes. her? Yeah, I'm still training with her. I've been, the last time I actually saw her was two weeks ago before I actually really started grinding hard on this bare knuckle stuff. Now she's fighting Amanda Lemos. Now yes. Michelle Watterson is one of those girls that beats the girls she's supposed to beat but sometimes doesn't beat the girls that like it's even or she's the underdog. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I hate to, I hate to say it, but it, it's, just well, you know, like, so the thing with Michelle is that she's so good that she fights to her opponent's levels. And if that person can rise, push up to become like the star that she is, Oh man, it's hell on water for them. But then when she knows that that person's like, un, like, I don't want to say beneath her, her, her skill set are just a little bit below. She fights to their levels and then they just kind of float. So, how do you how do you correct that? Yeah, I, to tell you the truth, I can't even explain how to because like I do I do the same thing. It's a mistake that I do, and it's just because the fact that we just get comfortable. It's like almost like you're sparring with your sparring partners versus you going out there trying to, well, ultimately just kill somebody. How many um, how many um, fighters have like life coaches, like psychiatrists and life coaches, other than just like boxing and MMA coaches? Is that part of the, the game? to people? Because I remember when Greg Jackson, everyone was like, oh, he's like Yoda, you know, back in the day. So people, like some athletes do need life coaches. Like for one or like fighting in itself is a depressing sport, man. You're sitting there constantly having to sit there, self-doubt yourself and try to fight that mental battle, go through those. But you have to go ahead and put some building blocks and some steps into them. And, the, and, only certain, and you're only as good and mentally strong as the people around you. So if you're around people who are all negative or in that certain type of environment, they're going to be like that. But if you're with people who are positive people, always trying to look for the best and seeing the things that you need to correct. So you're always working on involving yourself. Those, those will help you out mentally and be mentally, make you mentally strong. Now, do you think it hurts though, that Michelle Watterson and Holly Holm are best friends? Like, do you think like sometimes that that's why, because like they don't, not that you need animosity, but they're like twerking together and they're like making out and making sex tapes and scissoring. Uh, do you think sometimes like it, it, like they should be like angrier at each other? No, because uh, <laughs> then you guys wouldn't be able to watch those videos. <laughs> uh, are you telling me this because you're getting in trouble for watching them or what? No, but I'm saying like it seems like like uh, they're almost like maybe too comfortable, and that's what's going on in like fights sometimes. Like they're not they're not is it not level of competition or something? Like maybe they're, maybe they're maybe they're too friendly because they're the two best girls in the gym right yeah but see me and my brother fight like that all the time and we sit there knowing the fact that we have to yeah. got it's it it's not moving it, it slipped it slid out uh <clears throat> now me and my brother sit there and fight like that all the time we sit there banging out and make sure that we can go ahead and elevate ourselves even though we're so playful after the round and before the round like we sit there and do what we need to do all right another question so clarissa shields right yeah. And uh, Bill, if you don't know her, she's the greatest boxer of all time. Two time gold no, medalist, two time gold medalist, murderer, right? So they put her in, the, in like the PFL, which is probably a mistake because like 
they're going to do with Bo Nickel, who's going to the UFC after one fight or the contender. I almost think you need those like lower level King of the Cage, LFA. And so they put her in a, a, a competition where she could win. I don't know if it was a million, whatever it was. And she goes, up against, she goes up against a, a brown belt in jujitsu who has a, a decent record, maybe like three and three, but whatever. And the girl just takes her down, holds her down, wins a decision, right? And now okay. it's like, I'm not saying it's hype is bust because you never know. Look at Aaron Pico, right? Aaron Pico kind of a, he got knocked out his first fight. Now he's looking like yeah. a world beater, right? But I, I got to say, like, you guys knew that was going to happen at Jackson's. Did, did they just put her against wrestlers all the time? Like, like what, how, do, how did they train her? I have no idea. Like, yo, what? How you're asking me? I that's the same question I asked them. I was like, what did you guys show her? Because, <laughs> because I, like, I would, I would think that her hands are so good as it is that it's just basically like, okay, we're gonna do wrestling morning, wrestling in the afternoon, submission, defense, and then hands once a week or something. But well, Adam, don't you think at, at a certain age you can't really learn wrestling? You know what I mean? What are you talking you about? Be a great wrestler. You can be okay. So you're never gonna be great if you've never learned it. I think I have a hard home to have to learn how to wrestle at the age, like about what 35? Oh, and then wow. she started how about everybody? I think especially if you're a female and she's wrestling jujitsu people, she could at least learn to not get sucked in guard, taken down. I mean, she's not wrestling yeah. D one, you know, you know, she's yeah. not wrestling Adelaide Bird or something. Uh Michael Johnson, do you, you guys know each other? Dotson and Johnson? Yeah, I like Johnson. He's cool. All right. Michael Johnson's here, by the way. You watched his fight last week? No, I did not. It I was had, a uh, robbery. It was such a robbery. This dude, a black guy got robbed on television. Uh, he really? Okay, here's how. How many times that happened? That's happened one too many times. Wait up, Michael. Michael, Michael yeah, yeah. won the uh-huh. first round. He won the first round, right? He, he fought this guy, Maller, uh, Malarkey, right? And he hurt him in the first. Hurt him bad. Then the guy came back a little bit at the end. He came back. He hurt Michael. But Michael hurt him worse. Uh, second round, all right, Mal- Mal- Malarkey won. Third round, you won. Uh, but they gave it to the other guy. Michael, what happened? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. There's a bunch of Malarkey. So I, <laughs> yeah. um, I, mean, I, I, I don't know what happened. I mean, I guess, you know, these judges make you second guess everything you do in there. You know, so now I've been thinking the whole time, man, things I could have did different. I should have did different. Shouldn't have been that close. And um, I don't know, man. They got it wrong. That's for sure. Did you I've watch been, the fight I've, over and over again? No, I've only watched it once. I don't even want to watch it anymore because I got such a bad taste in my mouth from the decision being called to him, you know. Now, the first round, you almost had him out. I got to get going. Oh, you got to go. Johnson, yes, you're the best. By the way, Dots doing bare knuckle boxing, Michael. He's doing bare yes. knuckle boxing. When is this fight? Right it. Uh, August 27th, and I get to go ahead and knuckle, knuckle somebody's face. And uh, where can we get tickets? Got to be you, Michael, next. Yeah, I'm staying away from that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, thanks, man. Take care, brother. Thank you, man. No Later, guys. All right, so, Michael, what do you think? Because the first time, it looked like you had him hurt. And then you could have maybe possibly just like pounded him out from the top and might have gotten a stoppage. I, I, I mean, yeah, you look at it that way. That, that's what I got to see. But I heard him. He, he falls in an awkward spot. You know, we, we get the scrambling. Follow-up punches don't land. And, um, and, you know, at that point, you know, I think he recovered pretty quick. I didn't really feel like I, I could have. Not to mention he held my glove. I mean, I was trying to pull away and get away. But, um. You know, he recovered well. We got back up, and, and we had a hell of a fight. Now, the third round, you think you won, right? The third round, I won hands down. I think the first and the third is hands down, my win. I mean, do you think the first – now, how hurt were you at the end of the first round? Oh, he just landed a good shot. I mean, that was it. You know, he landed a shot while I was going in for a shot on his leg. You know, he landed one right on the chin, and I went and just grabbed a leg, and – um. I popped back up, you know, I wasn't in a position that he was for as long as he was in, in, earlier in the first round. But, you know, um, these judges don't watch the whole fight, apparently. Yeah. Did you get was to- it 29-28, all three judges? 
Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Did you get the 50 grand at least? Yeah. Yeah, the bonus is coming. But, um, I mean, that's a bonus. You know, um, I won the fight. You know, I deserve my win, you know, and everything else that comes with it. You know. Um, but everyone thinks you won. Did, did, did Dana call you and say, I, honestly, you won? No, no, I haven't got a call from him. Um, you know, he's a busy, busy guy. You know? uh, now, Usually are you still- best of me at the press conferences. Usually goes like, hey, I don't know what happened with the judges tonight. You know what I mean? But he didn't say anything like that. I, I don't think he was there, right? He wasn't there? Oh, yeah, I, I, I don't know if he was there or not. You know, I, I don't see him or kind of pay attention to, to really you know, who, who's around or, or who's not. But um, I mean, it was a pretty big main event, so he might have made an appearance, you know. Got it. Now, um, are you still with that girl you came to my show with uh, in Arizona? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. No, okay. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm... There was a girl. Okay, Bill. So he comes with this girl who's smoking hot. I mean, white girl, just like, I mean, like a 10, right? A 10 out of 10. But she's not wearing underwear. And she keeps what? opening and she keeps flashing me by accident. Uh, hey. you know, like Stone? I'm trying to not look. Right. I'm trying out of respect to Michael. But did you notice that was happening? Yeah, that ain't true. She had underwear, I'm for sure. If she didn't, I didn't pay attention. But. Oh, OK. All right. <laughs> I, want, I, I want to know if you knew if she had underwear. Right. OK, because I wanted to tell you. But I, how do you tell someone you're not your girl's not wearing underwear? Um, hey, you are a comedian, you know, I mean, that's- <laughs> <laughs> but she was she was hot as hell. And she was she was in love with this guy, but he was a, Mike's such a cool dude. Like Mike just chicks flock to him. Like he just gets yeah. like he, he's very unassuming. Uh, yeah. By the way, I, I can take this out of the podcast if you don't want the underwear thing. She's not. Gonna, <laughs> is she gonna watch this or no? I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll, I don't know. All right. Uh, Let me know. No. Text text me. If I'm gonna take it out. I'll take out the underwear <laughs> stuff. Uh, so now he does I heard, look like he lost a fight. By the way, <laughs> what was that? I lost Michael one. doesn't even look like he lost a fight. You look just like you just, you know, you haven't been punched in the face. In I know. I, I've been ready to get back to training. I got a few stitches there. And, um, oh, okay, there you go. Well, you so he, doesn't get, he doesn't get black eyes. He just gets eyes. You know, it's like yeah. he's already. So, <laughs> by, by the way, Michael came with his mom to my show. And, his, and like his family, he has like the coolest family. Uh, that was that was really cool, man. You had like your cousins and your mom and like. Yeah, and, yeah. We all came to support. It was a good show. That was mm-hmm. awesome. And, and and they're all like so proud of him. They're just so proud of him. You know, like your family was so proud of you, man. It was really, it was really good to see, man. Um yeah. Yeah. now you're in uh you're in Florida, right? Yeah, well, I'm in St. Louis right now. Um, you know, niece just had a baby the other day, so came back and enjoying some family time before I, you know, get back to Florida and get back to work. Now, are you training with uh is it you and Michael Chandler? Is that your main training partner? Uh, no, he's not my main training partner, but, um, you, you know, when he's down there, you know, we, we try to get some time together. Um, I'd say, um, like Jason Jackson might be my main training partner. You know, I, I got a few other guys on the team, but, um, you know, we kind of, you know, spend most of our time together in there. What happened with Chandler and Poirier? Oh, I, I don't know. No idea. I, I don't pay attention to all that nonsense nowadays. Like, it it, it, it it doesn't seem too real nowadays. You know, I'm from I'm from an era where if people have problems or issues like in the fight game, like you wouldn't get a chance to really see a video of it. You know, like it would be it would be over and done with or in and out. It'd be a little scuffle and that'd be it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Guess they were just a little liquored up. Some yeah. fight. Type, you know, they're both bad dudes and uh, you know they want to fight each other. Who do you think wins that fight? I mean, I don't know, man. It's hard to go against either one of them. But, uh, I mean, Chandler right now has got momentum, believes in himself more than I think Dustin would believe in himself at this point. Now, I mean, now, Nate Diaz said that Khabib is a scared fighter, doesn't uh, make sense he's in the Hall of Fame. Uh, he's a guy you fought. You fought Khabib. You're the first guy to hurt Khabib, actually. Um, he goes, Khabib's a fucking little bitch. Uh <laughs> Well, who did he beat for the title? He got Dustin Poirier and Gaethje. They've both been finished over and over. The same way he beat them, it's like, you could, you, you ain't no good. You're a scared <laughs> fighter, scared of fighting the whole time. Now you're in the Hall of Fame. I was here even before the Hall of Fame. Uh, <laughs> uh, do you agree with Nate Diaz's comments? 
I mean, I love Nate. I, I, I love what Nate Diaz says. He's um, he, he, he's a, you know, he, he's interesting. Definitely interesting. Um, I wouldn't go as far as saying Khabib's scared. <laughs> you know, that's, um, that's a little pushing, but um, I mean, Khabib's great. He's one of the greatest. Um, you know, Nate just loves to stir up shit. He's trying to get him to come back and fight him. He says the only two fighters that are worth uh, him fighting are Nganu and Israel Adesanya. <laughs> Um, <laughs> what I want, I, I, whatever Nate was smoking when he wrote that, I want to hit that. <laughs> sure. um, and I have a question about that. What is the policy with weed in the UFC? Can you smoke weed now as a fighter? Um, yeah, yeah, it's not really, um, tested that much on you know, as long as you're, we're not going out there high or anything like that, it's completely fine, you know, as long as guys aren't abusing it, which I think everybody stays, I'm pretty good with it. Um, now, in celebrity boxing news, Lamar Odom is fighting the fake Drake. He's the guy Lamar, that really? yeah, he's the guy that actually dresses up like Drake, and he goes to clubs saying he's Drake. They, they call him Drake because he's the fake Drake. Who do you think wins this fight, the fake Drake or Lamar Odom? I'm gonna go with Lamar Odom. Yeah. Have you ever trained with him? No, no, I've never trained with him. Never met him, hmm. but. Um, <laughs> That that's funny that he's boxing. Every everybody wants to be a fighter nowadays. Well, Lamar's two and zero. Oh. He beat Aaron Carter, and then he beat, <laughs> he did, and then and then he beat one of J Lo's first husbands. So he's he's two and zero, oh, and so and now he's fighting the fake Drake. Uh, so, oh, man, <laughs> that's funny. The in sync boy, right? Isn't that Aaron no, Carter? no, that was the he's the brother of the guy in the Backstreet Boys. Uh, oh. But he's a big <laughs> man. Your boy band's right. Yeah, yeah boy. So, so he didn't even make the cut. He's the brother of the of the boy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, Michael's more of a B2K guy. Um, now, yeah. uh, <laughs> Brian Ortega versus Rodriguez this week. Who do you think wins? Uh, I'm excited about that. I think Ortega wins. Um, he, um, it, it's pretty. He, he seems like he only has issue with guys that are champions. Yeah. Yeah. You know, other than that, he's beating everybody else. So. Um, you know, I see him winning that submission. Of course, I'm leaning towards that at some point in the fight. Now, when I, when I, when I saw you, you, had, you were on crutches. You, you had, like, both knees amputated or something. Like, like you were completely fucked up. And he's like, yeah. don't tell anyone. I had to take a picture from the waist up because he didn't want anyone knowing that his legs were – he was in a wheelchair or something. Like, uh, <laughs> how did you recover from that? What, what was I, wrong with you? Uh, no, that was when I was getting um, ankle surgery and knee surgery. And, um, you know, I, I was going through all that recovery phase. You know, so, um, you know, that's when you saw me so leading up into all these fights. That's why I wanted a quick turnaround. That's why I wanted to get back and fight. And that's why this decision lost things so bad because um, I had such a long layoff. I took some time to finally get healthy. And um, I felt like I was really getting back in a groove. And, um, you know, you just won to, that, you won that fight. Don't look at it. It shouldn't sting, bro. Honestly, yeah. I as a big brother to you, okay? Because I've, I've been around this game for a while. You won that fight, okay? No one gives a fuck about the win-losses anymore. Everyone's going to remember you won that fight. Plus, you have, a lot of, you have a lot of losses. So what's one more, for real? Like, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but one, one more still sucks. I don't even like seeing it. Especially one that I knew I, that I, knew I won. But yeah, but I nobody, guess. Right. Nobody thinks that. It was white privilege, bro. They gave it to the guy. Uh, oh, man. It was it was reversed. It was re reversed. Said, yeah. I, I wasn't gonna pull the race card, but you pulled it, so it's good. <laughs> uh, now, Lauren Murphy, Misha Tate. Who wins this fight? I'm gonna go with Misha, just because. Um, I mean, I don't really know much about Lauren that much. I mean, I watch Fever fights up, but I don't really, you know, pay attention to. It. How many female the... fighters have you slept with? Nine. Really. I mean, see, I don't, I, I guess, I, I mean, I guess I might look okay, but I don't really, I mean, look, I'm out here over, I'm over, I don't, I don't, I don't go, I don't go after any of them though either. What about the one from Miami that like is now in the WWE, the one that twerks all the time? You know, <laughs> uh, uh, Valerie oh, uh, uh, Loretto, you ever, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I don't really know her, so. Guy, but would yeah. you even tell us if you did? I don't think so. He's a cool dude. He's not going to spill. 
I, I don't know if I would or not, it, it, <laughs> especially, especially out here. You know, maybe in doors, possibly. But does Luke Rockhold get the most tail out of any any guy out there? <laughs> Luke's a playboy. I, I think uh, I don't know, man. I don't really fall into Luke's love life. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Uh, now I heard you and I heard, you and, I, heard, I, heard, I heard back in the day you and Tall Steve used to like like double team chicks. Is that true or no? Big Steve, Big Steve the Bellator Tall Steve. Yeah, you and Tall Steve. I heard you guys would. Steve, Steve, Steve's been married in a, in, a, in a relationship forever. I know, I know. He loves you, by the way. He loves you. He he, he yeah. came on the podcast. He says you're his best friend at the gym. And Dude, we uh, might be, we might be the big guy. Yeah, I do love Steve. He just dog. had a break. He's such a nice guy. Such a yeah. Guy. The, the big guys are. Like, he's got a big fight coming up. He's fighting like the best guy. He's fighting a really good guy. Uh, yeah, you're a big jump. In in Idaho, um, should be a good fight. Uh, yeah. All right. Also on this card, Jack Shore. You know who that is? No. All right. So we're not going to talk about him. Uh, also, do you know who Shane Burgos is? Uh, yeah, I've seen him fight before. He's this fight with Ed. He's fighting Charles Jordan. Okay. I remember those. Um, I haven't seen Charles fight much. So I really have a, a full-blown opinion on that one. Um, but I like Shane's style. You know, he's definitely a striker, a tough guy. And um, was Edson, was that Edson fight his last fight? Yeah. Wow, that was yeah. a while ago. Yeah, so I think he's going to be pretty ready to get in there and get a win. All right, and then also coming up uh, in, from England, July 23rd, uh, Curtis Blades versus Tom Aspinall. That's a good That's a good fight. Tom Aspinall, he's the guy, that, by the way, he's just killing everyone. Uh, Bill, he's, the guy, he's, he's 12 and 2, heavyweight. He won his last fight against uh, Volkov by arm lock. He beat Jake Collier. He beat Sergei Spivak. And then Curtis Blades is the guy who's never reached his potential. He's got, he's like, almost like he does everything really well. Yeah, I love that and, then he, and then he's sort of like Michael Johnson where he makes one little mistake, uh, one little mistake. Um, and then it, it's rough. Um, yeah. But like, but, uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if he's 26 fights in. The... <laughs> okay. Good point. All right. He's not like Michael. Michael's much better. Uh, but who do we like in this fight? Yeah. It's hard to go against Aspinall. Uh, I mean, he can wrestle. He moves, moves like a middleweight. He's a damn heavyweight. Uh, I, I I like watching that that guy fight. I, I'm gonna go with Tom on that one. Now the mo the the main event I think on this card is is Jordan Leave it. He's a guy that twerks in the octagon <laughs> after after he wins. I, I'm not kidding. He 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 like does a split and just starts twerking, which Cormier just starts crying when he sees this, laughing. He's fighting Patty Pimlet. <laughs> I've never seen a guy oh boy. lose weight like th this. Dude must get up to like two thirty, just fat, and then he and then he loses it all and gets ripped. This is the main event of all main events. Michael, t who wins this fight? Talk to me. I I I, I don't know, man. Um, uh, you know, I've I've seen the the, the growth of the, of the Patty kid. Uh, I I don't know if he's as talented as what he's as what he thinks he is, but um, but we'll see. I think this Jordan kid's um a tough guy for him to fight. So um, interesting. I mean, we all, they all want everybody want Patty to fail. Everybody <laughs> wants him to fail. No, I just think he's a little cringy. Um, but um, you know, he's um he's got skill. You know, he's got the mouth. He's got the growth. He's got, you know, um, the whole country behind him, um, you know, so, you know, yeah, that, that, that's great for him. I just. Is it just I'm because people are so mad at Conor McGregor? So they want to take it out on Patty? On, just not sold on him yet. I, I don't care so much about how much he talks and everything. Just just like back it up with, with things, you know, like if you talk like you're the baddest guy, then fight the toughest guys that, that, that are out there, you know, fight these bad guys that are actually bad dudes, you know, like. Go in there with the best, and then start talking about it. You know that, and that's why. Isn't, isn't this who they're offering them? They're offering them the, the, the twerking guy. I mean, come on, man! If you got a mouth like that, you can get whoever you want. You know, <laughs> yeah, hey, you, you know how the UFC works. I mean, you, we we all know how this works. You know, like he's got 
he's got everything behind him. So, you know, he's, he, I think he's picking him. Um, and then Meatball Molly, who I like, she's also yeah. super tough. She's fighting Hannah Goldie, who's like the most ripped girl ever. She's got like a, a 19 pack. She doesn't always yeah. win, but she's just fucking, have you seen that girl? Yeah. 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 I've seen it. She's pretty ripped. I mean, she must like, like, I don't know, man. I feel bad for a boy. I feel like she has kegels and your dick will just smack off. Like everything about <laughs> her is a muscle. Like, like Jesus. She's just like one uh, man. Uh, Paul Craig is a guy on the card too. He's a guy that like only beats everyone from Dagestan. Like he, he won one fight. It, he, he lost 10, eight, 10, eight and submitted the guy with one second left. You know, that like, that like, badass fighter, you know what I'm talking about, right? I know Paul Craig. Yeah, I can't remember the guy he beat, but I like watching Paul fight. They call him the Bear Jew. That uh, <laughs> they really yeah. do. Uh, From Inglorious Bastards, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah he, 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 beat, he beat Ankalaev with a triangle with one second left after wow. getting murked. Um, so he's fighting Ozdemir. So Ooh, that's a good one, too. Yeah. That, I mean, that should be a good fight. Um, yeah, Vulcan's been out for a minute. And then uh, Maquan Americani, who got a blowjob while on the podcast. I'm not kidding. What? I, I interviewed the guy, and a, and a girl was sucking him off. And then he put the phone next to her. This is back when we used to do phone calls. And you could hear her like, <laughs> like yeah, dude, like uh, Mr. Finland. So he's, he's going to win no matter what. Um, so, uh, yeah. That, that, and then um, now, what did, now let's, talk, let's talk real fighting. Jake Paul, Rockman Jr. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. This 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 Rockman guy, he's had, he's had a hundred amateur fights, and he's twelve and one. But I watched him fight Tommy Morrison Jr. and he looked terrible. I mean, he looked he looked worse than Tommy Morrison now. Uh, he looked he looked awful. Um, I think Jake Paul might win this fight. I, I'm pretty sure he will. But everyone's happy because he's fighting a real boxer. That's how low the bar is. If you fight a real boxer, he's like, dude, he's fighting a real boxer. I'm like, he's a boxer. Like he's supposed to fight real boxers, you know. Um, but uh, is, he undefeated? is Jake Paul undefeated? Jake Paul is undefeated. He's five and zero. Oh. Now, how upset were you as number one as an MMA fighter, as a black human being, um, when he knocked out Tyron Woodley? Was it like, I I I went upset. I kind of knew something like that was about to happen. You know, really? people got uh, yeah, people got greased up. People got paid. People want to people want to see that go on about. I mean, I don't know. It's kind of hard to say because that's a lose lose. I mean, you know, I, I like Willie. It's hard to say, like, you really let him knock you out. Or, and then it's like you really knocked you out. Like, which one is worse? <laughs> uh, him, him, actually getting, not, him actually getting knocked out or him taking a dive, you know, like, yeah, you, but you know, think, like you think, you think he actually took a dive. Uh, it was you a think, solid punch. Yeah, it was a solid punch. It was a solid punch. I mean, maybe he wasn't supposed to hit him that hard. But Woodley smokes a lot of weed, right? I mean, he was high for probably like four years in a row. Uh, he didn't. <laughs> he didn't train. The other guy's two hundred and ten pounds. Woodley's like five seven. You know, I mean, he he fought at one seventy. It was um, one guy is doing nothing but boxing with Mosley Jr., with Mosley Sr., with the best guys. With and, and the other guy is like, you know, training double eggs and single eggs and, and you know. Yeah, but uh, I, know on, I know on paper, <laughs> one guy's a YouTuber and yada, yada, but he's still a solid athlete, probably on all kinds of juice. Yeah, oh, yeah he's definitely on all kinds of juice and, and yeah. doing nothing but boxing. Have, have you ever sparred real boxers? Yeah, I have. What's the What's the difference like? They just, I mean, they move a little better. You know, they 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 don't punch as much. You know, all their punches count. You know, I, I think that's the big. I, I think that's a huge difference. You know, um, they're just more calculated in what they do. But like right, but right, right now you don't lose any weight. Uh, so you you, you walk around at one ninety, two hundred. I wish. Yeah, that's my problem. I'm putting, I need to put on some size. I probably walk at like 75. How do you think you would do against Jake Paul in a boxing match? I beat him hands down. Let's make it happen. I mean, even even giving up 25 pounds or 30 pounds and the other guy's boxing. I put on some weight. I, I, I put on some weight for sure. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely put on some weight, but you know, that, that's not a 
that, that's not a fight that that happen, you know, because it's a chance that he lose. You know, they're, they're picking and choosing easy good fights for him. Like I'm not, nah, like, <laughs> I can actually fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the word in the UFC is that Tyron Woodley took a fall. Is that what you're telling us? That's the rumor that he took a fall. That's what people believe. Because nobody wants to believe he actually got knocked out. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the, I mean, that's the other. But like, but like I heard that Dana White back in the day used to beat Tito Ortiz in boxing. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, that's what I, that's what I heard. It's just, it's just, but in a fight, Tito would murder him. And this was coming from Dana, which is why Dana signed up to fight Tito Ortiz. You, you don't think that like a guy who just trains boxing has an advantage over a UFC fight, MMA fighter? Depends on how good that fighter's boxing is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, 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 right. You know, my right, you're, making, you're making lots of sense here. You're making lots I'll, of I'll sense. Take, I'll take my boxing over Jake Paul's boxing. Yeah. I think you're right. I mean, you're also f- fast as hell. I mean, you're you're probably the fastest guy in the whole division. I'd like to think so. So I definitely take that against him. So yeah, if it could happen, if it could happen I'd definitely go in there and box him for sure. Have you ever yeah. knocked out cold in a uh, in sparring? No. no have, you ever, have, have, you, have you ever been dropped? In sparring, yeah, I've been dropped a few times. Yeah, with my style, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna run into some. <laughs> From some guys that practice. <laughs> Who dropped you? Uh, I mean, I've been kicked in the head by Anthony, uh, AJ, Anthony Johnson kicks me. Uh, Jason Jackson has dropped me. It might be those only two guys. Though. Anthony Johnson is 260 pounds. Why are you sparring him? Yeah, this is, um, <laughs> this is, I was getting ready for Dustin too, I think, when we were sparring. Yeah, so you're getting ready for a fight at 145, and they push <laughs> you in, and they push you in with Anthony Johnson, who's he the hardest. He's the hardest hitter in the history of the sport. Yeah, he, he didn't have anybody to spar with, so, I mean, just, <laughs> yeah, because everyone ran out of the fucking gym when, when he wanted yeah. to spar. I mean, yeah. but yeah, but, we'd have the little guys go with some of the bigger guys. I mean, it it keeps us on our toes. And he kicked you in the head. Yeah. A few times happens. And nobody told you, like, hey, Michael, you got a fight against Poirier coming up. Why are you sparring with the, the probably a guy who could easily be the UFC champion? Because <laughs> we were getting ready. <laughs> we were getting ready to fight. Dust is a big, big lightweight. Getting ready Did for you season. get hurt? Did That's you get hurt from that? I mean, why would you do that? I, I, I popped back up and we finished the round and that was it. Did he say he was sorry? No, of course not. <laughs> 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 who apologizes? <laughs> yeah, I don't know a guy who's 80 pounds heavier who kicks you in the head. <laughs> Dude, These are men, them. Adam. These are they're out, they're out of our league. Were you in the gym when he, um, Anthony Johnson, uh, wanted to fight over him? No, nah, I would must have missed that one. Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> they had some bad blood. Those two. Um, have you ever done mushrooms with uh, Rashad Evans? No, not with him. Has he tried to like get you into mushrooms? Uh, no, he hasn't tried to. I mean, I don't have a problem with mushrooms. I like them. But I heard he has like a um a table outside the gym, and he dresses up in like Rastafarian <laughs> clothes. And people that leave, he tries to tell you all about mushrooms. He has crystals and stuff. That, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> he might. <laughs> Um, all right. So Michael Johnson is single. Are you on Tinder? No, nah, no, nah, I'm not in any of those dating apps. Um, What's the difference between St. Louis girls and Miami girls? <laughs> a huge difference. <laughs> like, for example, I mean, the St. Louis girls are more, I mean, homey, more real, you know, more down to earth. <laughs> they're uglier. No, 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 come on. There's some hot St. Louis girls, dude. No, there's um, good looking girls. Yeah, the Midwest, you know, we got good looking girls. Do you prefer the girls in St. Louis? No. <laughs> <laughs> you could have seen this girl that was on them, Bill. It was like the girl was a model. Model. She had like, her, I mean, she had barely any clothes on. She Where was, was this? It was in Arizona. And, uh, and she was all, she was all over this dude. Like he was like, yo, he's like, yo, go wait in the corner. 
And then she's like, <laughs> fine. And she goes, she puts her head down. And she waits in the corner. Don't believe any of this. <laughs> then, then, then during the show, she was putting lotion on and giving him a handy during the show. Like, yeah, yeah it was crazy. Adam would never lie or exaggerate anything. Never. Come on. It was unbelievable. It was, I was like, dude, it was, and I was like, where'd you guys meet? He's like, he, he was like five minutes ago. Like he's, yeah. he's, he's that good, dude. He's, he's that good. I believe it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That well, listen, good. well, listen, Michael, it was a pleasure talking to you. You got robbed. Don't get into a funk, man. I know sometimes you get into these funks and then you start hanging right. out with, you hang out with the old crew. You guys do a, like, a, like a drive-by. Okay. None of that. Okay. Seriously. Trying you, not, to, I'm trying to save lives. Nah. You, won, you won the fight. You're going to get $50,000. Everyone know you won. Do okay. something about these judges. Right. Forget the judges, bro. Forget the judges. You won the fight. Yeah. Take it as a W. All right? Um, and you did nothing stupid. You didn't You didn't put yourself into a heel hook. Okay? You didn't... Uh... Or, sorry, uh, yeah, I'm, it seems like I'm getting better, right? Yeah. You're not... <laughs> not fucking clicking. Yeah, you're, not, getting... you're, not, you're not winning, this, you know... 14 minutes and 59 seconds of every fight. And then the last second, you're like, hey, to break my arm. OK, like, yeah. seriously. Yeah, it, it seems like I'm clicking on to something at the end of my career. Well, not, not, not at the end. You know, I'll tell you, I'm going to put like five more years in, five, ten more years in. It's you did great, bro. You did great. Are you saving your money? Now I am, of course. Yeah, I've learned. Trust me, I've been I've been broke. I've been broke enough to not even want to spend money. <laughs> like like now as in this week you're saving the money or like now because you haven't got it yet oh yeah i got um well you know i had the fights back to back so you know my money doesn't go anywhere anymore good save it save the money bro save it yeah yeah, yeah i'll be out of the country right now on a, on a week-long vacation doing something well listen congratulations but be happy man you did you did great michael you did great man and uh i'm, I'm proud to call you a friend so you know. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Likewise. No problem. Well, take care, man. Nice to meet you. Easy. Yeah, nice to meet you. Be good. All right. That was uh, Michael Johnson. Good guy. Cool dudes. Yeah. Both yeah. guys. Super yeah. cool. Did you, did you watch the fight? You don't watch it, did you? I didn't watch this fight now. <laughs> I could tell you didn't watch the fight. He won yeah, the you fight. He's like, I'm like, what about this move? Yeah, no, yeah. he won the fight. Won I the love fight. him, though, as a fighter, though. He's great. Dude, he's such a class act. Fucking yeah. Class act. I mean, just a down to earth guy. Doesn't... Do you think he's got some bad breaks in his UFC career? I think he has ADHD. Mm. And I think he gets bored. And I think he's like almost a victim of having too much talent. Yeah. Um, and I think that he puts himself in, you know, one of those, he's one of those guys that like, I mean, literally would dominate the fuck out of the first round, 10 8, and then get caught in the guy's submission. The guy's like, yeah. A master at, you know, like he's the master at heel hooks. Then he get hold on a heel hook. You're just like, oh, you know, um, Sarah McMahon's like that, too. I don't know. Maybe it's a wrestler thing because there's no submissions in wrestling. So you could get yourself out of. Uh, and Michael was a you know division two wrestler. He was a solid top top yeah. wrestler. Um, yeah. You know, I think that he's a, I think he's a victim of uh, being too talented in some ways. And I think that if he had less talent, maybe he'd be more paranoid you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, but I think he's learning and I think he's, he, you know, he definitely won that fight. Uh, and, uh, you know, it sucks cause it's on his record, but I don't think there's a person out there who didn't think he won except for the, three yeah. Fights. And I, th and I always feel when those fights happen, like Dana brings those people back, like he got robbed last time. You gotta give him a chance now. You know what I mean? I don't think Dana cares if you lose, if you, yeah. especially a guy like him. I mean, this guy, you look at, you look at Michael Johnson's Michael Johnson's win. I mean, his fights, the dude is like, and I understand why he's saying that, like against Patty uh, Pimlet, right? Pimlet. Pat, because, um, because, uh, you know, and look, I, that guy, that guy, Patty's like, he's had two UFC fights. So let, let's, you know, let's give him a, a little bit of a break, but yeah. you look at Michael Johnson's fights, right? So he lost, uh, it was a split decision, right? But before that, he fought Clay Guida, Tiago Moises, um, who was the guy he was winning and then lost. Josh Emmett, who's like, he beat Artem Labov. He beat Andre Feely. He fought Darren Elkins, a fight that he was kicking his ass and then he came back and lost. He fought Justin Gaethje. Yeah. Uh, he fought Khabib. 
he beat Dustin Poirier. He lost. Did, it. He, did he lose by decision to Khabib? Uh, uh, Kamara in the third. Uh, he beat Dustin Poirier. He lost to Nate Diaz. He lost to Benil Dariush. He beat Edson Barboza. He beat Melvin Gallard. He beat Gleason Tebow. He beat Joe Lozon. Lost yeah. to Algeri. He beat Tony Ferguson. I mean, this is a prime Tony Ferguson. He beats and beats. Oh, my God. You know, I mean, this is... He lost to James Krause in 2008. Uh, How did he lose to Nate Diaz? Was it like a triangle? No, Nate just outpointed him. Outpointed uh, him. But, I mean, that was Nate. That was one of Nate's best fights. Uh, like, that was a fight that Nate looked... You know, Nate's one of those guys that, like, he looked amazing against him, and he looked amazing against Donald Cerrone. Uh, you know, uh, you know, when Nate looks good, he looks really good, you know? Yeah. So, anyway, uh, what do you got coming up? Uh, when does this come out? Tonight. Tonight. Uh, you know, I'm... Uh, I'm actually going to be, I'm in LA now, Austin tomorrow, headlining shows in Austin tomorrow at the, at the Creek of the Cave. And then we're going to be out, out, off the hook, your place next week, next Tuesday. Nice. How far is Austin from Houston? Pretty far, right? Two hour drive, maybe two hour. Twenty. I'm in, I'm, in, I'm in Houston this weekend. I was going to say. Houston Improv? No, I'm at this, uh, the Riot Comedy Club in Houston, which I'll get you in there, by uh, the way. Pays really well. I've heard of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's like three shows. So Friday, oh, Saturday, awesome. Friday and Saturday. I've perfect. definitely heard it for sure, man. Yeah. So that's where I will be. Thank you, Bill. You're the best. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.